Hello, gentle viewers, and welcome to another episode of Alistair Reviews It. And today I'm going to be reviewing To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, the eagerly anticipated space opera from Christopher Paolini. I've been patiently waiting for another book from him since 2011, when he came out with his last book, Inheritance, part of the Inheritance Cycle, also known as the Aragon series. For the most part, I was kind of hoping that this would be, his next big book would be a continuation of, you know, Allegasia and all of that kind of stuff, but to be honest, I was excited for any big book that I was going to get from this author. Paolini describes Aragon as his love letter to classic fantasy, and similarly, To Sleep in the Sea of Stars is his love letter to science fiction. Kira Navarra's dreamed of life on new worlds. Now she's awakened a nightmare. During a routine survey mission on an uncolonized planet, Kira finds an alien relic. At first, she's delighted, but elation turns to terror when the ancient dust around her begins to move. As war erupts among the stars, Kira is launched into a galaxy-spanning odyssey of discovery and transformation. First contact isn't at all what she imagined, and events push her to the very limits of what it means to be human. While Kira faces her own horrors, Earth and its colonies stand upon the brink of annihilation. Now, Kira might be humanity's greatest and final hope. This review is going to be broken up into four parts. Plot, setting slash world building, characters and characterization, and finally, a spoilery kind of a reaction. You know, everything from here on out is non-spoilery. And then I'll put a big spoiler banner when I'm actually going to be doing a spoilery talk about this. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars follows our main protagonist, Kira Navars. She's a xenobiologist that is sent out um, to try to find colonizable planets. So she stumbles upon this alien relic, and at first she's so freaking happy, but then this dust starts to cling to her, and then you, you have a kind of alien-esque vibe to this the entire like first part of this story it, it just reminds me of alien just like a sci-fi horror at first but a multitude of events ensue as uh kira navarez and other humans come into contact with aliens a galactic war starts between species and kira navarez finds herself in the middle of everything it it seems like her connection to this relic might be either a curse or it could be her only hope maybe even for the survival of humanity. So it's hard to give much more away without giving away any spoilers, but the front of this book and the back of this book are incredibly exciting. The middle kind of drags on a bit, but at the same time, I feel like the characters and how they are, I guess, learning and progressing makes it feel that way. I, I feel like the characters feel like things are dragging on and therefore you as the reader feel the same thing. So I'm not upset about it, but I do think that some people might not like that drag in the middle. But for me, it was it was nice. I was settling into the book. I was doing a nice settle into the book. So I liked that portion of it. The fractal verse, which is what Christopher Paolini is calling uh everything in this world is our world, but set hundreds of years into the future. Human technology has made significant advances. We have colonized multiple solar systems in the galaxy, achieved faster than light travel, which Christopher Paolini goes into extreme and very detailed explanations of this, which really kind of hints that he has done a lot of research about everything that he uses in this book. The future of humanity is extremely diverse, racially, culturally, and religiously. People can now get genetic mutations, and some people even get modifications in order to live on certain planets. It truly feels like a realistic expansion that humankind could make. Overall, I loved the setting and the world building. I think Christopher Paolini took a traditional space opera, and he made it his own. I feel like this isn't a spoiler, but there's no artificial intelligences in this book it's more human intelligence human intelligence that has grown far past its current capacity 
I thought that was really interesting to watch and, uh, well, to read about. And I'm hoping that he kind of expands upon that in any other additions he makes to the Vractalverse. But now we shall move to characters. So for characters, we follow Cure. We follow Kira Navarra's in third person throughout most of the book. And uh, Christopher Paolini, for this character, unlike his other characters, uh, tends to take kind of a step back and let the character observe its surroundings, which I didn't think I would like because I, I, w I was watching an interview from him where he was explaining how he... Um, approached characterization in this book and I, I did not think i would like it but i think it works really well uh for the whole ambiance for them however however there are a large cast of other characters i won't be going into all of them as it as it would be extremely spoilery however i do think uh, mr paolini does a great job at making kira a very believable character the decisions that she make don't always like I guess logically or reactively makes sense, but you always see her problem solve her way to these decisions. She's a very analytical person and he uses that in his characterization to uh, push the plot forward it, in a way that makes complete sense why she made those decisions. In no place did I think that she made a decision that was out of character. I think Paolini has always done a good job at creating unique characters that feel different from each other. I do wish that we had gotten to know a lot of the other side characters in the book. Um, Cause despite how long this book is, um, I, I don't feel like uh, we were truly able to sink our teeth into who these characters were. However, I will say that my fa favorite character is an eccentric pilot. Let's just say a very eccentric pilot. And I love him. I love him. I've never seen a character like him ever before. And he was my favorite throughout the book. And that is as much as I can say without giving anything away. Before I get into my spoilery thoughts, if you want to skip to the end, you can just go to the timestamp on my screen. If you're commenting and leaving spoilers, please make sure to put a spoiler warning at the top of your comment so that people aren't spoiled about the contents of this book. Spoiler! So if you're still here, you have either read To Sleep in a Sea of Stars or or you truly don't care about watching spoilers because you're pr probably a little masochistic or maybe just curious. I'm not sure exactly what I expected going to go into this book, but I did not expect a xenobiologist to bond with an ancient alien slash relic. It almost gave me kind of Saphir Aragon vibes which I was digging because, I mean, that's why I liked the Aragon series. and I, But I didn't expect it to have such diverse and immense power. I think that the the uh, Xeno was incredibly, like, it, 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 it wasn't an artifact that I expected. I, I, I expected it to be a lot more straightforward. Paolini delivered something that was incredibly complicated. And I'm used to my uh, sci-fi's being about space and space wars and stuff like that. But I think Paolini uh, definitely put his own mark on this entire saga. I also didn't think I would enjoy well-researched scientific explanations that he makes throughout the book. But honestly, it grounds me more into the realism of what's going on in his, in, in his book. You know, it is science fiction, but with all of what all of the incredible research that he's conducted, it makes it a lot more realistic. It makes it seem like something that is very possible to happen in the future. I was a little jarred at the beginning with the cast of characters. It, it, it did, like I said, it did feel like a uh, alien uh, with everybody being killed off by the Xeno, which we find out later, later that is because, you know, Kira is afraid of everything. She's afraid of the Xeno and therefore the Xeno strikes everything. So that is so sad um but uh i i do really enjoy the crew of the wallfish that uh we come to know and love especially gregorovich i do think that stepping slightly back i, I do think that uh with the xeno killing kira's fiance and old crew members you definitely see the stakes that she's at with with keeping this Xeno with her like it it's not just something that's dangerous it's something that has been dangerous it's something that has taken something irreplaceable but anyways 
I loved it. Halfway through, I was like, oh, maybe I'm not going to like it as much. But then I loved it again. And then I was like, mm, maybe I didn't like it as much. But I sat on it for like two weeks and I love it. I really do. I think it's a different route for Christopher Paolini. I can see how much he's grown as an author. And I'm hoping that his next book is just as good, if not better. Let me know your spoiler thoughts with a little spoiler banner at the top, if you will. The spoilery portion is over. I do want to say that there are some minor connections uh, between Allegasia and this world. I'm not going to give much away because I'm still trying to figure it out, but Christopher Paolini said it at the end of his book. So um, I'm still trying to figure out those Easter eggs. Let me know if you figure them out. This way we can all figure out the connections and really deconstruct whatever evil plot Mr. Paolini is conducting. Concocting, really. This was our first adventure into the Fractalverse, and hopefully we get to visit again. Let me know what you guys think about the book. Are you going to pick it up? Are you going to read it? Uh, what are your entire thoughts about the Fractalverse and to sleep in the sea of stars? I loved it. I think that I can see where uh, criticisms can be made, but uh, I think that that kind of makes this, shapes the story in a way uh, that made me really feel for the characters. So anyways, please like, follow, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, gentle viewers. Hasta luego.